After the couple stepped down from their roles as senior working royals, Buckingham Palace announced the couple would no longer use their HRH titles and will not receive public funds for royal duties. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle also paid back the cost of the renovations for their newly decorated house, Frogmore Cottage, located near Windsor Castle. But had the couple remained in the UK working for the Queen they might have been granted a special honour now expected to be reserved for Prince George or his younger siblings. Nine Honey, an Australian lifestyle network reported, had they, Meghan and Harry, remained as part of the monarchy, they would have moved into Clarence House, the current residence of Prince Charles and Camilla. Charles moved into Clarence House following the death of the Queen Mother in 2002. The suggestion came after a royal insider told the Mail on Sunday, it is more likely to be safe for Prince George, Princess Charlotte, or Prince Louis. The publication also speculated the outdated decor is a turn-off for younger royals. The residence was the home of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother from 1953 until 2002. It was also the home of the Queen, then Princess Elizabeth, and the Duke of Edinburgh following their marriage in 1947. When Charles becomes king, he and Camilla will move into one of the apartments in Buckingham Palace, where he plans to give more access to the public. According to the Sunday Times, the Prince of Wales is planning to transform the royal residences from private spaces to public places. Currently, the royal quarters at Buckingham Palace include 52 royal and guest bedrooms and 188 staff bedrooms. In total, the palace has 775 rooms. Yet as it stands visitors can walk through just 19 of the state rooms and the palace's garden. They aren't the only changes that Prince Charles is rumored to make when he ascends the throne, as it has been reported that he is looking to slim down the monarchy. Reports say Charles is looking to have a team of seven or eight senior royals when he becomes king. It has been speculated that the move will be brought in to save the reputation of the monarchy after the departure of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle from the royal folds as well as Prince Andrew's early retirement. A slimmed down monarchy could also be a cost effective move, making less of the royals rely on the taxpayer funded sovereign grant. The Queen last December unveiled her own redesigned leading team when she welcomed Prince William and Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge to Windsor following their tour of Scotland. Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall were also in attendance alongside Prince Edward and Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, and Princess Anne. Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, and Prince William have reportedly been looking at moving to Windsor according to the Mail on Sunday as a royal fan has pointed it that it might be for Prince George. The oldest of the Cambridge children could follow in his father's footsteps and attend Eton College which is based in Berkshire. Royal Watch Susan Logue pointed out that the Cambridges would be close to the school if they moved to Windsor. Speaking on Us Weekly's Royally Us podcast, she said, it might be several reasons they'd want to move. 1. To help the Queen. 2. To be near Kate's parents and 3. If Prince George goes to Eton, they'll be close to the school. I can actually see them moving to Windsor or onto the property somewhere close to the castle. Host Molly Mulshine added, it makes sense. Windsor is beautiful and it is the most adorable little town. It would make total sense. However, Kate and William could move into Clarence House if Prince Charles moves to Buckingham Palace when he is crowned king. Royal expert Marlene Koenig has discussed if the Cambridges would move to Clarence House if the Queen dies. Speaking to Express.co.uk, Ms Koenig said, I see Charles using Buckingham Palace for a formal residence, perhaps opening it more. Only using it for formal moments. He just lives down the street at Clarence House. I see William and Catherine staying at Kensington Palace for a while and even if Charles did move into Buckingham Palace, there's a possibility the Cambridges would move into Clarence House. But these days everything is so easily accessible. Further changes to the monarchy could also include Kate not becoming Queen Consort if Camilla does not receive the title before her. 
On the topic of whether the Duchess of Cornwall would receive the Queen title when Prince Charles becomes King, Ms Koenig said it would be a terrible precedent if she was only a princess. Prince Harry looked out of it in latest appearance, Insight Meghan and Harry losing US fans as majority disinterested in book, analysis Kate and William to save Commonwealth from referendums under Charles, video, she said, there's no law, it is a tradition that the wife of the king is the queen. I find it personally ridiculous. I think it would sort a terrible precedent for example if Camilla is princess consort then why should Catherine be queen consort? I find it very telling that Queen Elizabeth II made an announcement a couple of years naming Camilla and William to the Privy Council. There's a very good reason for that in the case of Camilla that makes it possible that she will be present at the Accession Council, when Charles is proclaimed King. Why shouldn't she be Queen? There's no legislation needed, it's just tradition. Ella Snedden, of Falkirk, underwent intensive chemotherapy for leukemia last year, as she bravely battled the illness. As a result, the youngster was forced to shield during the peak of the coronavirus pandemic. She was photographed kissing her father through a window during the lockdown by her mother, Linda. Mila's dad, Scott, had to go into work and was afraid that he might infect his daughter with the lethal virus, so was forced to live apart from his family. The photo, entitled Shielding Mila, was one of the 100 images included in the Duchess of Cambridge's book Hold Still, a portrait of our nation in 2020. Kate, 39, later spoke to little Mila on the phone, before meeting her for tea at Holyrood in May this year. Linda revealed to Hello! Magazine how she was struck by the Duchess' caring and considerate nature. I can't put into words how remarkable the Duchess of Cambridge has been, she said. She was so caring and considerate. I got a real sense of her being a mother in the way she spoke to Mila. There were challenges, because of all the COVID restrictions and wearing masks, but she said she wanted to give Mila a big hug. Mila wore a tiny crown and matching pink shoes for her Holyrood meeting with Kate. For her part, the Duchess of Cambridge stayed true to her promise to wear pink, Mila's favorite color. Which royal is the keenest gardener? The three royals with green thumbs, reveal so proud of you. Kate Middleton lords Emma Rajakanyu's record Brea. Spotlight how Kate Middleton made royal history with wedding tiara choice, Insight, Kate wore Amy plus M's silk shirt dress which featured a dipped midi hemline and pleated detailing, with tan heels and a floral face covering. In an interview with Lorraine today after the rendezvous, Linda said, it was an incredible experience and we were really well taken care of and memories that we TMLL treasure for a lifetime. It was such a surreal experience, where we were seated as their guests was just phenomenal and it's been very much appreciated. After a difficult time, royal expert Stuart Pearce says Prince Harry and Prince William are rebuilding their relationship and Kate and Meghan are close. Stuart Pearce told US Weekly, I know that the four are talking with one another and they TM re-talking by Zoom, and by, FaceTime. They TM re very close with one another. Stuart Pearce is the author of Diana, The Voice of Change, which was published in early 2020. Stuart revealed that the conversations between the two couples remains informal. Kate cooking dinner in the kitchen and her husband making cups of tea as they chat with the Sussexes across the pond. Harry and Meghan decided to leave the UK royal family, just 18 months after their wedding in 2018. Tensions increased after Harry and Meghan TMS tell all interview with Oprah Winfrey in March. However, the two brothers were seen reunited at Prince Philip TMS funeral a month later in April and after the unveiling of Princess Diana TMS statue in July to commemorate her 60th birthday. Kate and Meghan have also reportedly begun communicating since the arrival of Meghan and Harry's daughter Lilibet. Kate sent the newborn a gift and told reporters at the G7 summit she can't wait to meet her new baby niece. Stuart Pearce also told US Weekly they are trying to keep their relationship on peaceful terms. It TMS not that William and Kate leave all the controversy about Harry and Meghan alone. 
but they just simply position it there because after all, it TMS not their responsibility to be involved in, you know, verbalizing anything. Prince Harry and Meghan labeled out of touch over private jets, analysis Prince Charles heartbroken by Harry and Meghan fall out really hard, reveal Edward's heartfelt admission about Kate, never going to be easy. In sight, what they do is just simply offer as much peace and tranquility and calm as possible. However, when asked by US Weekly correspondent Joe Drake about possible rumors of Meghan and Kate working on a Netflix documentary, Stewart said, I think it TMS stretching the imagination. What TMS happening is we are seeing they both have very clearly defined roles, they do not correspond. I TMM talking about the statement they are making individually as women, but Kate has her own specific role, which is very different from the way Meghan has her own specific role, that TMS what I said with it.